as he said, I'm the lead author of the mathematics chapter. I'm sure many of you are thinking, oh good, I love mathematics. And others are thinking, oh no, not mathematics. Put up your hand if you love mathematics. And what about if you hate or fear mathematics? Uh, this is common. Mathematics inspires emotions. Um, the, the emotional response that we have to the subject is very much dependent on the way we were taught the subject. So um, this is affected by teachers and by textbooks. That is why I'm very pleased to have had the opportunity, honored to work with a team of mathematics educators to give guidance to mathematics textbook authors. Here we are working together, Antonius Varmeling from Germany, Masami Soda from Japan, Parvin Sinclair from India, and myself, as we work together on this chapter. We each bring our, our experiences as authors and as teachers to, to the guidebook, and our experiences researching and reading the researchers, research of others. For example, from my own story, I taught mathematics in Canada, and then Swaziland, and then back in Canada over a nine-year period. When I came back to Canada from Swaziland, I immediately noticed how cultural mathematics teaching is. And this surprised me because I had thought that mathematics was purely objective before this. I thought it was values-free, culture-free. When I realized that this is false, that drove me to leave teaching to to research this phenomenon, and, um, and I've been researching it for some time. In the, in the guidebook, we, in the chapter, we do both the objectivity and also recognizing the human choices involved in mathematics, which are, that's usually hidden in mathematics texts. The, the book gives, um, it, it explains what contributions mathematics can make to sustainable development it explains the challenges, it gives a clear set of guidelines for authors, and it also illustrates the, the guidelines with, with examples. In one of the examples, there is a sample textbook, some sample textbook pages from, um, that can be in a mathematics text, and this one deals with preparing for a typhoon in Japan. It features real data from Japan, students look at graphs and maps to understand the, the relationship between the sea and the air and the land. And, and then they make choices and decisions about what society should do in preparation. So in short, they are understanding, learning mathematics and also understanding better the relationship between all the th aspects in our ecosystem. Another example is the body mass index. You may have heard of BMI, which is a measure for um, whether people are overweight or underweight. The, the example has students looking at the benefits and also the, the difficulties with the body mass index. And um, they understand then the, the, the problematic aspects of large scale measurements of, of human um, populations which brings them to the graph that you see here, which comes from the UN Millennium Development Goals report. This graph shows the changing proportion of undernourishment in the developing regions over the years. Students are then asked questions like, what is more important, the proportion of undernourished people or the actual number of undernourished people? Or, Considering the graph, what do you expect to happen in the years up to 2030? From these examples, we develop the guidelines for the authors. So let me explain to you a little bit about how mathematics can contribute to sustainability, peace, and, and global citizenship. In other words, let me tell you some reasons you can love mathematics if you love people and the planet. First off, Mathematics helps us communicate with precision. Precision is really important in design of, of beautiful, efficient, and useful things, from the local to the global scale. On the local scale, when we design a garden, we use mathematics, which relates to sustainable food practices. On the global scale, when we design climate treaties, we have to figure out what to count and how to count it. 
Mathematics is also very useful for systems thinking. For example, we have conflicting needs often. My individual needs for food, um, water, work, health, may conflict with the larger society's needs for equity or education. But these also may, these are immediate needs. They can conflict with long-term needs that, that affect the environment, the, the air, the water, the, the land. Mathematics provides tools for mediating these conflicting needs. To do this, we have to put numbers on things that may be difficult to enumerate. Now, I did say I will give you reasons to love mathematics, but there are also reasons to fear mathematics or to be wary, or cautious of it. Um, an example of a mediating, a number that is used to mediate m multiple needs is the GDP, which is an, indi an economic indicator. Of course, GDPs are very problematic because you can have high GDP and a lot of poverty. It can mask some of the inequities. There are other possible indicators that can be used, other indices, the, the Human Development Index, for example. But any of these indexes is, is still going to value certain things, certain people, and marginalize others. So it, it is very, very important to, for children to understand that these all are choices, human choices. And they need to learn that, that all mathematics, every count, every index, every operation is, is a human choice. And they need to learn to, to test the abstract knowledge that they have against local contextual knowledge. They, they need examples and textbooks and questions that get them looking at different ways to measure and consider social and environmental phenomena. In short, the, the chapter provides guidelines for textbook authors that, use, that, um, that are clearly given. There's 15 guidelines. They, they describe in detail the benefits of following the guidelines, but also the challenges, which are very important because otherwise you don't believe the guideline if, it, if you only have the benefits. Um, these, these guidelines come from our experiences, but also the experiences of others who we've read in the, in the field. So it is a rich, rich resource. I hope you find time to read it and, um, and benefit from it. And I wish you all strength and creativity as you support the development of students in, th in this kind of approach to mathematics. Thank you.